I wanted to start this video saying moo with me, but I'm not sure everybody knows Rent. Hi everyone, I'm Leo from Rimbler and today I'm going to show you how you can crochet these super cute chunky cow slippers. This is a free interactive pattern on Ribbler, so check the link in the description box, head over to Ribbler, get the free pattern, and then you'll be able to see this video tutorial from within the pattern. When you open the interactive pattern on Ribbler, you can choose to view your specific size only in the cover page, so make sure you do that before we start, and then all the instructions throughout the pattern will be just for your specific size. This is an intermediate skill level pattern. If you're an advanced beginner and you want to Give yourself a challenge you can try this out uh, it's a relatively quick project because we're going to be using chunky yarn so it works out pretty quickly what we're going to do is we're going to crochet the two sides they're the same piece made twice then we're going to uh, crochet the inner bit where your toes sit so the toe cover part it's going to be inside it's not visible then we're going to connect the slippers and create the front of the cow and at the end we're going to add all the details like the horns and the ears. The sole is made out of thick felt and is sewn to the bottom of the slipper using blanket stitch. I'm going to show you how you can do that. And this is what you're going to need to make these chunky cow slippers. Chunky chenille yarn. You'll need two to three balls of your main color and up to one ball in every other contrasting color. Five point five millimeter hook or a size to match the gauge. Four millimeter thick felt fabric. You'll have instructions of how to make the sole in the pattern. Number eight pearl cotton thread, sewing needle, scissors and eyes, either buttons or safety eyes. And of course some toy stuffing. This tutorial will be in US crochet terms, but if you go on Ribbler and you prefer using UK terms, you can simply change your preferred language and then you'll see the entire pattern only using the terms that you prefer. You'll also be able to start a journal where you can upload your work in progress photos or your finished object photos. You can also make notes of any changes you make to the pattern or if you have anything you want to remember. So feel free to start your own journal as you make this pattern. So now that you have everything you need, let's get started and make the sides of the slipper. I've already made one side, so I'm going to show you how you make the other one using these color work charts or written instructions. Round one, you're going to start with a slip knot and then you're going to chain seven. Now you're going to work three single crochets into the second stitch from the hook. Now work one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. In the next stitch, which is also my first chain, I'm going to make another three single crochets. And as I work, I'm going to rotate to the back of the stitches and I'm going to work in the back of the previous four single crochets I made. So I'm going to make one single crochet in each of the next four stitches in the back. And to finish this round and every round, I'm going to make a slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. That's it, my first round is done. Next we're going to make a chain one. This starts every round and also we're going to make our first stitch into the same stitch. So we're going to make two single crochets into the first stitch, then two single crochets in each of the following two stitches. Two. Three. 
Now I'm going to work one single crochet in each of the next four stitches. One, two, three, four. Next I'm going to increase in the next three stitches, so making two single crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, that's one increase. And to finish the round, I'm going to work one single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Starting my next round, I'm going to chain one and make one single crochet then increase in the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat this another two times, so in the next four stitches. One single crochet, two single crochet in the next stitch, one single crochet, two single crochets in the next stitch. Now I'm going to make one single crochet in each of the following four stitches. And now I'm going to repeat my increases, so one single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next, and I'm going to repeat it three times. So this was my first time, and this is my second time. time and then I'm going to make one single crochet in each of the following four stitches two three four finish the round with a slip stitch So at this point I'm finished increasing and I'm going to start working the color work chart and I'm going to work up the length of the side. Simply open the color work chart on Ribbler. I like to work on landscape when I use charts. Uh, you can either use the chart or the written instructions. And then my first uh, two rounds are just to make one single crochet in every stitch. So rounds four and five were just made with main color, there were no color work uh, instructions. So now I'm going to move on to round six where we start adding uh, contrasting color, so CC1. If you don't want to use the color work chart, you can just read out the written instructions. So we're going to start round six and we're going to make three single crochets in our main color, then we're going to change to CC1. So on our third single crochet, we're going to draw up a loop, but not going to finish the stitch. Instead, we're going to grab our contrasting color and finish the stitch using that color. So we're going to draw the new yarn and finish the stitch. This is a more smooth color change. And now I'm going to work with my contrasting color and I'm not going to work over the other color because I want to create a smooth, um, kind of like a seamless um, color block. So I'm just going to work not over my white. So I'm going to work just with black and then I'm going to use the same color changing method to change back to our main color. And to finish this round, I'm going to make every stitch in main color. Round seven, you chain one and then you make three single crochets in MC. And when you change color now, 
I'm going to take the uh, contrasting color from the end of the previous round and hold it lightly so don't pull it too tight and then just finish the color change and work the following stitches again not working over the main color but leaving it behind and working the following stitches in contrasting color so now I need to make four single crochets with contrasting color and this is my fourth stitch so now I'm going to take main color from the back from the beginning of the round and again not pulling too tight you don't want to pull really tight you want to leave your yarn kind of loose and now I'm going to work the next 14 stitches in main color So now instead of carrying over contrasting color from the previous cow spot, we are going to, um, to cut the yarn. We're going to leave enough for the following round and we're going to cut contrasting color and reattach the yarn into the next section. Um, so we're going to work with uh, separate bunches of contrasting color um, yarn and we're not going to cut MC. So again, just work. Uh, with contrasting color, not working over MC, and then just pick up the MC yarn from the back, not pulling too tightly as you change. Then make the following stitches in MC. And this is how you're going to work every color change basically um, when you make the two sides of the slipper. Uh, so either if you're working with the chart or with the written instructions, you just carry on working in the same manner. So I just finished working up to the round number for my size. Uh, when you finish making the second side, make sure that it matches the size of the first side. And now you're going to fasten off the yarn. So these are your two sides finished and now we're going to make the toe cover. The toe cover is made the same way as the first five rounds of the slipper side, so just make it using contrasting color. And before you move on to the next section, cut a piece of a main color yarn which is one meter long. So now you have two base sides and one toe cover. This is where things get a little bit more tricky, so make sure you follow me on how to connect everything and assemble it into the slipper shape. So first we need to mark each piece. So I'm using a stitch marker, but you can use a piece of yarn. Lay the toe cover flat on a surface, and then you need to mark the stitch to either one of the corners, so I'm choosing the right one. Next I'm going to take one of the base sides and I'm going to lay it flat on a surface as well with the fasten off point facing up and I'm going to find the middle uh, stitch. So uh, for me it was right after the fasten off point, for you it might be different, but I'm going to mark the stitch in right in the middle of the base side. Now taking my next base side I'm going to flatten it the same way and then I'm going to mark the stitch to the right corner of the base side. So now these are my right side and my left side. To connect everything together I'm going to insert my hook into the mark stitch on the right side and attach main color. And now I'm going to reinsert the hook into the same stitch and into the marked stitch on the toe cover. So I'm going to insert it through both of the stitches and I'm going to single crochet them together. You can remove the stitch markers if you want. Now I'm going to single crochet together the next five stitches of both the side and the toe cover. So I'm going to insert my hook into both single crochets at the same time and single crochet them together. So 
So now I have a total of six single crochets connecting the toe cover and the right side. Next I'm going to insert my hook into the mark stitch on the left side and then into the next stitch on the toe cover and I'm going to single crochet them together and again I'm going to single crochet together the next five stitches of both the side and the toe cover. Make sure you count your stitches to make sure you have all six of them. And that's it, you should have six stitches on both sides. And this is the connection part done and we're going to move on to the first round of the front. I'll just remove the last stitch marker and I'm going to get into the front part in the pattern. And now I need to slip stitch into the next stitch. So in my case it's the fasten off stitch and I'm going to chain one and I'm going to single crochet in the same stitch and in the following 19 stitches of this uh, side of the slipper. So I have 20 stitches on this side and now I'm going to single crochet in the 20 stitches of the next side. So I'm going to jump over and insert my hook into the first stitch of the next side. And now I'm going to have a little hole here which we're going to sew later with the little piece of yarn that we've cut before. So this is my last stitch of this side. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a single crochet in each stitch of the upper part of the toe cover. So the remaining 14 stitches, the ones we haven't connected. So this is my first one and I'm going to make a single crochet here and in the next 13 stitches as well for a total of 14 stitches. So now I should have 54 stitches all around and I'm going to finish the round with a slip stitch into my first stitch. And this is basically the first round done. For my second round, I'm going to chain one, make a single crochet in the same stitch and in every stitch all around. And now basically we're going to repeat this round of making a single crochet in each stitch for uh, a certain number of rounds so depending on your size it's going to be a different number um, for me I'm going to be making a small size so I'm, I'm only going to make 10 rounds so uh, keep carrying on working one single crochet in each stitch around finishing the round in the same manner of slip stitching into the beginning stitch and starting it with a chain one working into the same stitch and I'll see you back when you have all the rounds that you need for the front before we start decreasing. So now finished round 10. For you it might be a different uh, round number but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the yarn a little bit uh, so my work doesn't fray and I'm going to sew this little gap that was created when we first made the front part so I'm going to take the piece of main color yarn that I've left uh, aside and I'm going to insert it into a yarn needle and basically just um, attach it uh, to the stitch next to the hole and I'm going to sew the, the hole shut by inserting my needle all around the stitches uh, that are around the hole and then I'm just pulling it tight Now I'm going to tie the yarn, just create a little knot and I'm going to hide it in the slipper because the inside is not going to be visible so I'm going to insert it inside and then I'm going to cut the yarn. 
So now we're going to sew the back of the two sides together by flipping the work so the toe cover is facing up and then folding the sides so they meet each other and then you're going to insert your needle in the first round of one side and attach it by making a knot and then just sew the two uh, sides together along the first rounds of both sides. Then finish it with a knot and uh, insert the yarn into one of the sides and just like to hide the tail in the base side and then cut the yarn. So this part is where your foot is going to rest inside the toe cover. So now we're going to use some toy stuffing and stuff both of the sides. Uh, so you want to really insert the toy stuffing all the way down there so it's nice and firm. And now we're going to carry on uh, decreasing in the front. So you can insert your hook and we're going to work our next round which we're going to start with a chain one and single crochet in the same stitch and in the next six stitches so a total of seven single crochet And then next we're going to make a single crochet two together which is a decrease so we're going to insert the yarn into the next two stitches and then pull the yarn through both of them together creating a decrease and now we're going to repeat this and make seven single crochets and one single crochet two together all around until we reach the beginning of our round and then we're going to make the last decrease and slip stitch into the first stitch next round we're going to chain one single crochet in the next stitch so this is number one and then we're going to single crochet in the next five stitches so a total of six single crochets so now we're going to make a decrease again and single crochet two stitches together then we're going to repeat it making six single crochets and one decrease all around then finish the round with a slip stitch into the first stitch. Next we're going to single crochet in the same stitch and in the next four stitches for a total of five single crochets. And then we're going to make a single crochet two together decrease in the next two stitches. So we're going to work them together. Don't mind the little bit of yarn that I have there. Repeat it all around and then slip stitch into the first stitch. Next round you're going to chain one and then single crochet in the same stitch and in the next three stitches for a total of four single crochets. And then we're going to make a single crochet two together decrease over the next two stitches and repeating that all around and then we will slip stitch into the first stitch to finish the round. Now we're going to pull up the yarn uh, so it's not going to unravel and we're going to stuff the front of the slipper but I want you to insert your hand into the toe cover and press down on the bottom of the slipper and you're not going to stuff under the toe cover you're only going to stuff above it and to the sides of the slipper uh, that's because you don't want to step on stuffing you want to step on a flat surface um, so make sure that when you stuff you um, stuff only over the top and the sides of the toe cover and not at the bottom. So for our next round we're going to chain one, single crochet in the next, uh, in the same, single crochet in the same stitch and in the next two stitches for a total of three single crochets. And then we're going to single crochet two stitches together. Repeat this all around and then we're going to change color to contrasting color number two so the nose of the cow so 
make your last decrease then slip stitch into the first stitch of the round to finish it but instead of pulling up the main color you're going to change and pull up your contrasting color for the nose so now you have changed color for me I like to tie the ends of the uh, old color with the new color and then I cut the, the main color and I just put all the tails inside so my work is organized and I don't have anything uh, in my way. Next round you're going to chain one single crochet in the same stitch and then single crochet in the next stitch and then single crochet two together. And you're going to repeat this all around until the beginning of your round and you're going to uh, finish it with a slip stitch into the first stitch. So now you're going to pull up the yarn and this is where we're going to insert the eyes. So if you have uh, uh, amigurumi safety eyes, you can just insert them. But if you don't have them, you can use um, uh, black buttons um, or you can embroider them. Uh, but for me, I use black buttons. So you're going to take some of the sewing thread and, and the black buttons and you're going to attach the eyes as you like. For me, I prefer putting them um, to the top corners of the, um, the nose part and two rounds back from the color change so I'll have just enough space between the nose and the eyes but again you can play around with it and position the eyes where you want and just attach both of them and then we can carry on with um, finishing the slipper front. So now you can reinsert your hook and chain one and now we're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around so you should have 18 stitches and just carry on single crochet in, in every stitch all around and finish off the round with a slip stitch into the first stitch. And the next round is exactly the same, so you're going to single crochet in every stitch around. Finish with a slip stitch into the first stitch and pull up your yarn. So we'll finish stuffing the slipper front. Next round you're going to chain one, you're going to single crochet in the same stitch and then make a single crochet two together decrease and you're going to repeat that all around. Slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. And then your last round, you're going to chain one, insert the hook into the same stitch, but don't finish the stitch. You're going to decrease to create a single crochet two together. And then you're going to repeat making single crochet two together all around for a total of six stitches. Next, you're going to slip stitch into the first stitch and then you're going to fasten off the yarn. Add the last bit of toy stuffing uh, to the nose if you need uh, for it to be nice and firm. And then you're going to insert the remaining tail into a yarn needle and you're going to close the gap uh, of the six stitches by basically inserting the needle through all of the six stitches and then pulling it tight and then this will close the gap. Now we want to make a little knot and hide the remaining tail in the slipper. Then cut the yarn. If 
first follow the instructions in the pattern for cutting out the soles out of felt and then take the slipper that you made and flip it over so the bottom part is facing up and take one of the sole pieces and lay it on top of the slipper and you can uh, secure it in place with some pins so it doesn't move around when you sew it. Make sure that everything is covered and now you're going to take your number 8 pearl cotton thread and a sewing needle. So you want to double thread the needle and make a knot at the end. So now we're going to work in a blanket stitch. So we're going to insert the needle through the felt about a centimeter inwards and then through the slipper itself and out in the same uh, place where we made our first stitch. And then we're going to hold our thread to the side and insert the needle about a centimeter, it doesn't have to be perfect, but about a centimeter next to the right. And we're going to work before the thread. And we're going to sort of like keep pulling the thread to the side as we work the stitches and that way it's going to create this sort of line in the inner part of the, of the slipper. I hope I'm explaining it right. I'm not a, an expert at sewing, but this blanket stitch is really the perfect thing for uh, attaching soles. So you just work in the blanket stitch all around uh, until you reach back to the beginning. And then you just insert the the needle through the first stitch and make a knot to tie the thread and just hide it into the slipper and cut the remaining tail. So it should look something like this. Mine is not 100% perfect, but maybe yours came out better than mine. So now we're going to adjust the fit of the slipper over your foot. So the opening as it is now is quite wide. So you want to pinch the, the back and the front of the slipper and to sort of like sew it in a little so, so it'll be a little bit more fitted. So just insert the uh, MC yarn and so just a, a few rounds, or if you need a bit more than that, just to kind of narrow the foot opening so it's not going to fall off your foot when you walk. And then you just make a knot and hide the, the remaining tail. And then you can reinsert it into the back part and, and do exactly the same thing you wanna basically sew it so it's more fitted in the back and it's not going to fall off your foot as you walk. Just small adjustments so it will be a better fit for you. And that's it, the slipper base is done and we can move on and make the ears. You're going to make two ears using a contrasting color one. So start with either a magic ring or what I'm going to do is show you an alternative. So you chain two and then make six single crochets into the first chain working over the beginning tail. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now you pull the yarn to fasten off the hole, the gap in the middle, and then you slip stitch into the first stitch to finish the round. Round two, you're going to chain one and then single crochet in every stitch across, so a total of six stitches. Six. 
and then finish the round with a slip stitch into the first stitch. And next round, we're going to chain one. And we're going to single crochet in the same stitch and in the next stitch. And then we're going to make two single crochets in the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that. So two single crochets and an increase in two single crochet stitches in the next stitch. And finish the round with a slip stitch into the first stitch. Now for the next two rounds we're going to make one single crochet in each stitch around and finish the round with a slip stitch and starting the round with a chain one. And for our last round we're going to chain one Make a single crochet in the same stitch, single crochet in the next, and then single crochet two together decrease. And then we're going to repeat that. So one single crochet, another single crochet, and then single crochet two stitches together. And we're going to finish by slip stitching into the next stitch and fastening off the ear. You want to leave enough tail to sew the ear to the slipper. Then just make your second ear and we'll move on to making the horns. For the horns you're going to use contrast color number three. Uh, I chose a different color than the one I have on the first slipper but it really doesn't matter. And you're going to start the same way you did with the ears. So either with the magic ring or with a chain two and then you're going to be making six single crochets into the first chain, working over the tail, the beginning tail. Two, three, four, five, six. And pull the beginning tail tightly, and then you can slip stitch into the first single crochet to finish the round. Chain one and make one single crochet in each stitch around and you're going to do the same thing for round two and round three. Don't forget to finish the round with a slip stitch into the first stitch and start the round with a chain one. Then you're going to fasten off, leaving enough tail to sew the horns to the cow and make your second horn. Lightly add stuffing to the horn, um, just to keep it in shape when you sew it to the slipper, so it's going to be nice and firm. This step is optional, if you want you can add two slits on the nose part with um, CC1 yarn. So just uh, cut a little piece of, uh, of yarn and with a yarn needle just embroider the shape you like in the nose. Um, again this is optional, you don't have to do it, but I think it looks much nicer this way. We're almost done. Now we need to sew the ears and the horns to the cow's head. So we're going to sew it over here. The horns are going to go on the top of the head, like this, and the ears are going to go on the side of the head. So now we're going to take one of the ears and we're going to insert the remaining tail into a yarn needle. And then we're going to flatten it so the remaining tail is on one side and we're going to pinch pinch the bottom of the ear so we're kind of creating a little um, narrow part and this is what's going to be sewn into the side of the slipper. You can place it wherever you like, I like it over here on the side and then basically just sew it in to the slipper.
Once you're done, you can secure it with a knot. And then hide the remaining tail in the ear. Then you're going to lose your scissors and try and find them. There. And you're going to cut the tail. And that's it, you have one ear done. Now just finish the ears by sewing the other one to the other side and I'll be back to show you where you need to sew the horns. So now both ears are on and we're ready to attach the horns. Same thing we did with the ears, you want to insert the remaining tail through a yarn needle and now basically you just want to find the position that you like best. I like to put it slightly towards the inner part of the head, so not exactly in the eye level but just slightly towards the inside. You can find a position that you like and then hold it together with pins so it's not going to move around. Um, or you can just sew it straight away and wing it. That's what I usually do. <laughs> it's not always straight, but it's cute. So you just want to go all around the six stitches of the horn and sew them to the top of the cow's head. It's fine if both slippers are not 100% similar. I've chosen different colors for the horns in my first slipper and then in my second slipper. Because um, then it will look more like two cows and not like a, a duplicate of the same cow. You can even make them in two colors if you like. Um, or do different expressions if you want. One with closed eyes and not the the buttons or the safety eyes, whichever you want, you can play around with it. So now once you finish sewing all around the horn, you can fasten it off with a little knot, like this, and then hide the tail through the ear, sorry, through the horn, and then cut it off. Then just repeat with the second horn, and we're almost done. yarn is so fluffy it's all over the place right horns are on ears are on there's just one more thing we need to do so if you're going to wear these slippers on floors then you're probably going to slip a little bit because there's not enough grip in the bottom of the sole so this is what we're going to do now we're going to add grip to the sole so one option is to repurpose some old flip-flops you can just cut the, the top part of the flip-flops and just use the sole and because it's rubber it will prevent you from slipping uh, when you walk on the floor. So this is one thing you can do. The other method that you can do and this is what I'm going to show you now is to use a hot glue gun. Because hot glue is silicon basically it will adhere to the sole but it will also create sort of like the same effect as a rubber basically. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you love your new chunky cow slippers. Make sure you head over to Ribbler and check out all the amazing patterns by independent designers. There's so much to explore. Let me know in the comments below which animal you think is going to make a super cute chunky slipper and until next time, stay crafty!